Shalom family. Yah is going to reestablish his fear among our people and among the entire planet. He's going to reestablish his fear. I want to ask you this question. Why does he need to do that? Hmm? Because people do not fear Yah. You know what's funny is I remember when I was a kid, we were afraid as children to say certain things. We were completely afraid. I remember uh, um, just walking down the street with friends of mine when I was only about eight years old. And you wouldn't say certain words or whatever because you'd be like, ooh, God is going to get you. We were too afraid to just speak and say anything. We were afraid to say anything, right? We were afraid to even swear because we knew there was a scripture that said something about swearing. And so that's how it was as, as growing up young. But nowadays, people have no fear. Now, I'm going to prove it to you because I want you to see something here, right? Let's pay attention. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. Now, these are the commandments and statutes and judgments which Yahuwah, your Elohim, commanded you to teach, that ye may do them in the land, whether so, whether ye go to possess it, that thou mayest fear Yahuwah, thy Elohim, and keep all the statutes and his, and his, and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy sons, all the days of thy life, that thy days may be prolonged. So basically he's saying, hey, you want to have long life, okay, you got to keep my statutes. Okay? You got to keep my statutes and commandments, right? That your days may be long, right? When you go into where? To possess the land. I want you to pay attention to something here because it's very important that you get these scriptures. That was Deuteronomy. Now I'm going to keep going. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter uh, 6. Again, I want you to see something here. I think it's in Deuteronomy 6 also where he talks about this, right? Um, then he goes on. He says, um... Okay, let me see. Let me go further down here. Actually, we can go to Deuteronomy 28 because he tells you in Deuteronomy 28. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and look at what it says here. Okay, now he says, verse 15. But if they, it shall come to pass, no, I'm sorry, verse 1, let's start at verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahuwah, thy Elohim, to observe, to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that Yahuwah will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth, and all the blessed, all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, and if thou hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah, thy Elohim. Blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall thou be in the field, blessed shall, you, shall be the fruit of your body, the fruit of thy, thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, the flocks of thy herd. Blessed shall I be in thy basket and thy store. So wait a minute. Basically, he's trying to tell you this here, right? That if you're keeping my commandments, you're going to be blessed. Hmm. Think about this, right? That's why I always say, you know, the tree by its fruit. Because he's telling you right here that if, you, if you're doing what I want you to do, you're going to see blessings in your life, right? All types of blessings in your family, in your children, when you go in, when you come out. But verse 5, Blessed shall thy, be, shall thy basket be thy basket and thy store. So in other words, if you have a store, it's going to be blessed. You got a business, it's going to be blessed. Blessed shall I be when I come and see and when you go out. So when you leave out of your house, in and out of your city, you're going to be blessed, right? Then he says, Yahuwah shall cause thy enemies to rise up against thee, right? So in other words, people are going to rise up against you, right? And when they rise up against you, what does he say? That rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. And they shall come out against thee one way and flee seven different ways. And Yahuwah shall command thee the blessings upon thee and thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thy hand to do. So in other words, the work of your hand is going to be blessed. Anything you choose to build and do is going to be blessed, right? And he shall bless thee in the land of you that Yahuwah thy Elohim giveth. And 
Yahushua established thee a holy people unto himself as he has sworn, right? So notice he's saying all of this, right? He said, I'm going to bless you in all of these areas, right? Now, if you go further down to this, notice what he says here, okay? Verse, he says, uh, 13, and, and Yahushua shall make thee the head, not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if thou hearken to the commandments of Yahuwah thy Elohim that I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right or to the left to go after another other gods to serve them. Okay, so now notice what he says here. He says, okay, but if thou shalt, if it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto his voice, to observe to do his commandments, which he command thee, to say that all these curses shall come on thee and overtake thee. So you're going to be cursed in every area of your life. You're going to see problems, curses. This You ain't going to see victories. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to see victories. You're going to see what? Problems, curses, this happening, that happening, right? All these things, right? And then he says, until you are destroyed quickly. And then the bottom line of this, what does he say in the end of this whole thing? He says, you're not going to stay in your land. Hmm? You're not going to stay in your land. You're going to be cast out of your land and sold as slaves and shipped over to another land. So now, all this because Yah's people do not what? Fear him. They don't fear him. And so because they didn't fear his, his, his let me tell you something. He gave us a warning. That was a warning in the word. And we should have feared like crazy. Man, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say this. I'm going to be careful. But we're not careful. We bold as can be. All you take is give a person a little bit of knowledge. A little bit. It ain't got to be much. You get one scripture out of the whole Bible. They run with that thing, create a whole religion on that thing. Next thing you know, they feel like they gods walking the earth, right? One scripture, right? But pay attention. Pay attention. Where are we now? Huh? In the land of our captivity. Why are we here? Because we disobeyed. Now, that alone should tell you we did not fear Yah. And because we did not fear Yah, Yah said, oh, I'm going to bring some things on you that's going to make you afraid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're going to get sold into slavery. You're going to lose your children. All these bad things are going to happen to you, right? Because you did not hearken to me, right? But if you do hearken to me, even in that land, in the last days, if you hearken, I will bless you. Yeah, you still be in the land of your captivity, but just like Daniel was in the land of the captive of his captivity, right? Just like the three um, Israelite boys was in the land of their captivity, they were blessed. Just like Joseph was in the land of his captivity, he was blessed in spite of the fact that he was in that land. So, in other words, he's saying that if you hearken unto me, even in the land of your captivity, I will lift you up, I will raise you up, I will bless you, right? Hmm. Uh, uh, uh. So. If you do what's right, you can be blessed, right? You'll be able to see the fruit of blessings in the person's life, not the fruit of cursing. Now, I'm saying, I'm using the word blessed because that's what's in the scripture. Most of you understand what I'm talking about when I say blessings and curses. The word blessings in Hebrew is Barak, okay? But because I'm doing this teaching, I want you to understand where I'm coming from when I'm saying blessing. Yah understands that I'm referring to Barak as what the scripture called it, right? So now, I want you to look at this right now. So, so now, where are we? We're in the land of our captivity. We have been cursed as people, but individuals can rise above that curse as I've proven to you with the scriptures, right? But watch this, right? Yah is always trying to establish fear. Always, right? Now, watch this. When Joshua, right, and the Israelites crossed over into the promised land, Yah gave strict instructions, right? Dealing with the promised land. When you go in and you conquer these cities, certain things you can't touch, certain things you can't keep, certain things you can't hide, you can't take for yourself. He mentioned it in the scriptures, right? But somebody committed a sin, right? Ancient committed a sin. And ancient went out and he took this, this accursed thing. Now I'm going to read that scripture. This is Joshua chapter 7, verse 24 through 26. And Joshua and all of Israel with him took Achan and the son of Zerah, right? So Achan had committed the sin and he actually told Joshua, he told him where it was. He said, okay, it's hidden in my tent. I buried it in my tent. So that's where it is. So Joshua told him, so you go get it, right? 
Now pay attention. They took ancient of Zara and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and daughters. So he took everything that he had taken, right? That he had stolen, the spoils of war. And then he took his sons and daughters, his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had, right? And brought them in the valley unto the valley of Achor, right? And Joshua said, he looked at him and he said, why hast thou troubled us? Yahuwah shall trouble thee this day. Mm. Why have you troubled us? Yahuwah shall trouble thee this day. So in other words, Yahuwah is about to bring judgment upon you because he told us what to do. So judgment now is going to come upon you. Woo, pay attention, right? And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones and they raised up over a heap of stones unto this day. So Yahuwah turned his fierce anger, wherefore the name of that place is called unto this day, the Valley of Acre, unto this day. Okay, now pay attention, right? I want you to understand something, right? What was his fierce anger that Yah brought upon Israel? His fierce anger he brought upon Israel was when Joshua and his men went out to fight, fight the city, i.e., right? They went out to fight this city. They got the, they were defeated in fighting the city. Joshua lost some men. And Joshua's like, man, we went out to fight this battle, but we lost men. What's going on? You know, we had to flee from these men. Right? That was Yah pouring his wrath. So now Yah's fierce anger and his wrath was what? It was what? Returned back to him. It was returned from his people. Because now they had did what was right. They said, okay, okay. We now know what you're going to do, Yah. But guess what? We're not in a situation today where we have judges, where we have uh, a system set up to where we have people where you can just say, hey, y'all, hey, this person did wrong. Yah said stone them. Can you imagine that today, right? Do you see how much unrighteous judgment is going on among our people? Such unrighteous that they can't judge anything. They can't tell the profane from the righteous, right? They can't tell. So y'all said, no, 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 no. Y'all can't judge nothing. That's why you're in the land of your captivity. Because you can't judge nothing. I wish there were spiritual men out there that could judge things. But y'all said there's only a few. But in these instances, what I'm going to do is I'm going to judge. Mm. I got scripture. I got scripture to prove it. We're going to go there, right? Let's keep going. Watch this, right? So now, y'all decides afterwards after this year he says okay we need to set up some judges some righteous judges okay so let's do that let's go to chronicles second chronicles chapter 9 19 verse 5 through 15 and he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of judah city by city and said to the judges take heed what ye do for ye judge not for man, but for Yahuwah, who is with you in the judgment. Woo! Whoa! Are you hearing what I just said here? Pay attention. He just said that if you make a judgment, that judgment better be right. Because if it ain't right, Yah is in that judgment. So what do you think is going to happen if you're not right in that judgment? Hmm? What do you think is going to happen? It's going to return to you. Watch this here. Listen to what it says. Next verse, 7. It says, first of all, verse 6 again. Take heed what ye do. So words, you better be careful. For ye judge not for man, but for Yahuwah. For, for, but for Yahuwah, who is with you in that judgment. Wherefore, now let the fear of Yahuwah be upon you. So he says, why not? Let me ask you this. Think about it. Why do the fear of Yahuwah must be upon you if you are a judge? Hmm? Answer that. If you are judging out here anything, why do the fear of Yahuwah must be upon you? Right? It must be upon you because now the judgment is going to turn around and come upon you. Watch this. It says, wherefore, let the fear of Yahuwah come upon you. Take heed and do it. 
But there is no iniquity in Yahuwah our Elohim. And there is no respect of persons, no taking of gifts. So he don't care how long you been on this earth. He don't care how young you are, how old you are, how educated you are, how smart you are, how wise you are. He don't care about none of that stuff. You better make sure you get that judgment right. Because if you don't get it right, his judgment going to come on you. You better judge righteously. Because if you don't, his judgment is coming on you. Now, when you judge, what that does is the court in heaven, what the heavens do is they dispatch angels and demons. To bring about the judgment. And when they see a judgment they're going for. If it's a righteous judgment. They will bless the man that made the judgment. And curse the person that he made the judgment against. Right? But if it was an unrighteous judgment. Now they're going to not curse that person. That he unrighteously judged. But guess who they going to get? The person who made the judgment. Pay attention. <laughs> you better pay attention here. Now keep watching. Watch this. Then it says, there's no respect of persons, no taking of gifts. Verse 8, moreover, in Jerusalem did Jehoshaphat set up the Levites and of the priests and of the chief of the fathers of Israel for the judgment of Yahuwah and for controversies when they returned to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Bear with me one second here. Good. Okay. So now he said for any controversies or anything to come, to come, I want these judges are going to judge this thing, right? And when they returned to Jerusalem and he charged them saying, thus shall ye do in the fear of Yahuwah faithfully and with a perfect heart. Wow. You're going to judge. He said you have to judge faithfully and with a perfect heart. Pay attention. He said, you have to judge faithfully with a perfect heart. Do I need to say it again? You have to judge faithfully with a perfect heart. Notice what it says again. It says, thus shall ye do in the fear of Yahuwah, faithfully with a perfect heart. And what cause soever shall come to you of your brethren that dwell in their cities between blood and blood. Between law and commandment, statutes and judgment, ye shall even warn them that they trespass not against Yahuwah. So wrath come upon you and upon your brethren. Do this do, and ye shall not trespass. So in other words, they have to judge righteously. Wow. And when they see something wrong, you better make sure it's wrong. Why? Because Israel has a habit. Of not having righteous judgment. These are the same people that want to kill Je Jeremiah. These are the same people, right? The Yahushua. They, 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 say, hey, they said, kill him. They picked up stones how many times against the, the Messiah, right? These are the same people, right? That wanted to, to um, destroy all of the prophets of old, right? These are the same people. Pay attention. So he says that they, they, they don't have righteous judgment. But I'm going to say this to you now. You better warn them. Warn them. Warn these people out there. Warn your people that they better not trespass because this righteous judge, he's going to look at you and this righteous judge is going to say, oh, you done did wrong. So now I'm going to judge you. So when that righteous judge, this righteous look and he judges the situation and he say, I'm going to judge you because you did wrong. You did wrong to this person. You did wrong to that person. This was wrong what you did. And he judged him. Guess what? Now y'all can bring judgment on that person because he did righteous judgment. But if he looks at that person out of some other reason why in his heart of the flesh and he looks, he say, you know what? Y'all going to judge you. You're wrong in this. You're wrong in that. You're wrong in that. And y'all looks at it and says, wait a minute. That person ain't wrong in this. Hmm. That person ain't wrong in that. Hmm. Yeah, you got two wrong. Okay. That person ain't wrong in this. Hmm. You unrighteously judge that person. Okay. Now. Angels, carry him out and judge him now. Wow. That's the word. Yah is doing what? Y'all said, I'm going to establish fear. Now, the problem is, 
We don't understand this and we open our mouths so fast because we don't know about the scripture. Half of us don't know about this passage, right? But y'all say, hey, this is how the, 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 the law of judgment is. Now, pay attention, right? Because even when you see in the New Testament, Yah is still trying to establish fear. When the Ruach fell upon the people and they received the gifts of the Spirit, right? And begin to speak in other languages. You know the story in Acts, right? When that happened, Yah says, okay, I'm establishing my assembly now. I'm filling believers with the Ruach. They're going to have the gifts of the Spirit. This is happening. That's happening. I'm going to bless them, right? And right after they blessed them, he said, okay, now I got something that I want to do here. The Spirit wants to do. So the Spirit put it on Peter and, and James in them heart to do this particular thing, right? And we know what it was. But I'm just paraphrasing because I want to be quick with this. I want you to get this, right? So now you know what happened, right? Two people, Ananias and Sapphira, lied, right? To Peter and the apostles. But notice, Peter and Paul say, well, you got to understand, right? You got to understand this, right? Remember what I just read to you? It says, notice what it says here. Watch it. Pay attention. It says, for Yahuwah, who is with you, is with you in the judgment. Mm. So when Peter and the apostles looked at them and they said, you didn't lie to us. You lied to the Ruach. Woo! Because that judgment, Yah was in them, in with them in that judgment. So they looked at the woman, they said, just like they carried your husband out, they're going to carry you out too. Yah was with them in that judgment. Wow. That's why they dropped dead. Right? Pay attention. Right? But what happens in verse 11? <laughs> Acts chapter 5, verse 11. Notice what it says here. And great fear came upon all the assembly. And upon all them that heard these things. So now y'all said, okay, I'm going to establish fear. You ain't going to lie. You ain't going to lie. You ain't going to do nothing wrong before my prophets or before my um, um, teachers or those that my apostles that I've chosen to go out here and do a work. You ain't going to lie before because my judgment is with them. My judgment is with them, right? And they can speak and my judgment is with them, right? Pay attention, right? So now... What you don't understand is Yah is in control of all of this. He is the judge above the entire earth, right? This is why in Daniel, right? Notice what it says here in Daniel. This is Daniel chapter 4, verse 35. And it says, And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. None can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? Yah says, I have my way. Hmm? I have my way on in the heavens, among the heavens of the earth. Right? And even in the army of heaven, I have my way. I am the judge of everything. Wow. Now, let's keep looking at this, right? Now, let's go to James. Watch this. So now, here we are in the future. Pay attention. Here we are in the future, right? In the time of Peter and James. And why would James make this statement? Notice what James says here. This is James chapter 4, verse 11. Because I want you to understand, the same thing is going on now. People have lost the fear of Yahuwah. They have lost the fear of Yahuwah even among those that Yahuwah have called to do his work. They have lost fear, right? They have no fear. Watch this. Now, this is James chapter 4, verse 11. It says, Speak not evil one of another, brethren. Mm, mm, mm. Wow, I guess we missed that one, didn't we? <laughs> I guess we missed that one. It says, He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Wow. So he's letting you know, whoo-wee, you better be careful. Because if you speak evil of, of your brethren, and you're not making a righteous judgment, right? You're not making a righteous judgment, oh, you in trouble, right? Speak, he says, you speak evil of the law, of Yahuwah, and judge of the law. Wow. 
Whoa. So then the Torah? Mm, mm, mm. That's for you Torah keepers out there, right? <laughs> now pay attention. So now, why does Peter go here then? Watch this. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. This is how it reads. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of things they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to ride in the daytime spots are they and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Woo! They sitting up feasting with you? Boy, you better be careful because if you get these brute beasts that, that, that have no fear of Yah, that will speak evil of things they don't understand, they sit back feasting with you? Woo-wee! That's Yah's judgment! Don't you understand that? That's Yah's judgment attaching itself to you. Because you're, you're, he says, because they feast with you. Pay attention. You better pay attention. So now we come to this scripture here. It's a wonder that Peter would go here. Now, notice what he says. That this is 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. It says, for the time come that judgment must begin at the house of Yahuwah. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the, 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 the good news of Yahuwah? Wait a minute. That don't obey his commandments? Think about this, right? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? You got to understand something. He said the righteous will scarcely be saved. You better fear Yahuwah. You better have fear in you concerning Yahuwah. You should be afraid to open your mouth about something you don't understand. If you don't understand it, just say, well, hey, that's something I don't understand. It. I pray that y'all give me the understanding on it and go on your way, right? But instead, you want to heap judgment upon you, right? This is why y'all says, I got, to, I got to establish judgment in the house uh, in my house among my people in these last days. Why? Because they got no fear. They have no fear of me. They speak evil of things they, they know not. They have no fear. So I got to bring judgment in the last days. I got to reestablish my fear. So I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to see it. You're going to continue to see Y'all break up families, break up homes. You're going to continue to see Y'all's going to bring judgment on people. He's going to do things to people. People are going to fall, 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 literally fall. You're going to see people get judged harshly. And I'm not talking about people that are just in this walk. I'm talking about people, period. Anyone that's Y'all's child, right? You're going to see judgment come upon his people, period. Whether they're Christian, whether they're Israelite, a known Israelite, right? Whether they're in this religion or that religion, you're going to see Yah's judgment fall hard on a lot of these people out here. You're going to see it fall hard because he said, I got to reestablish fear. There it is. I got to. You see, Yah has established judges. He sure has. He has established them. And those that understand this passage that I read to you in 2 Chronicles 19, verse 5 through 10, those of you that understand this, know it. And you know better. It says, He set judges in the land throughout all the fierce cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed what ye do. That could be interpreted as what you say too, right? Because what you're doing, you could be speaking, right? Mm-hmm. For ye judge not for man, but for Yahuwah, who is with you in the judgment. Oh, we. You remember that. You is with you in the judgment. May Yahuwah's judgment come forth. Hallelujah. That's his word. May his judgment come forth. It got to. That's his word. It must come to the house of Yah first. We want to see Yah bring his judgment out here on the world. Can't till it come upon us first, right, as a people. So get your eyes open. You're going to see it. I guarantee you will see it. Hallelujah. On that note, family, I'm going to say shalom.